Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me Niall Murphy and today is the 4th of May 2024 and I decided I needed to go for a nice walk up the hill. This climate is quite brutal, it's quite hot. Most of the day was actually cloudy so that's alright but now I'm out in the sun and I need my Panama hat but I'm hoping that the rest of me doesn't turn lobsterish. I'm also very sweaty because of this. And speaking of sweaty, that's a good segue, um, and that is to Sweaty Sockland. Yes, our good old friends in Scotland um, have been liberated from the tyranny of bums are useless, right? And of course, um, Count Dankula, who um, you may remember done the Nazi pub pug sketch, right, where he trained his girlfriend's dog um, to, uh, what was it, to raise his paw every time he said to see Kyle to the dog, which is a, a great joke, I thought, you know, and I don't think that would offend anyone, maybe, except Nazis, but somehow those without a sense of humour and a sense of irony tried to make him out to be anti-Semitic, and he was dragged through the courts for years. And he said, in some previous comedy that he'd done, immediately after Bums Are Useless decided to bring this new hate law in, Comedy Unleashed decided that they were going to do a special satirical comedy night about Scotland, in, in Scotland, right? And um, Count Dankula did the first stand-up gig he'd ever done in Scotland that night. He was a bit nervous too before, but he decided, well, screw it. If this is how bad it's got, then we all need to get together and we all need to undermine their authority. But he did say that he felt personally responsible for that bill passing and that had he not have done that sketch it maybe it wouldn't have passed so you know there you go nevertheless he's happy he's happy that bumza has buggered off and this is count dankula being happy about it <laughs> Yep, that's great, isn't it? Up ye and oot. <laughs> there you go. So, um, I'm going to stand under this tree. I need some shade at the moment. Nevertheless, I can hear that it sounds like cicadas. Well, in British we call it cicadas. I think the Americans call them cicadas. So they're quite loud. Oh, they are particularly loud. It's like, uh, or they crickets or something? Whatever the hell it is, it's not that different from being in Costa Rica. Oh, I love the tropics, don't you? Right, so, um, anyway. Um, Bums are useless has got himself a doppelganger in America who's, um, I think his name is Mike Lawler. The trouble is, although he is his doppelganger, he does actually look quite alike. Um, if you look at them um, together, you can see they're not, they look like they're sort of separated at birth, except um, the only trouble is one of them is white. Yeah, that's the trouble. So, yeah, um, Bums are useless's white doppelganger over in America is responsible now for bringing in this new um, anti-Semitism Awareness um, Act which is um, gonna make it through and when it does in America um, some freedom of speech laws will be curtailed because on one hand yes I can understand them wanting to protect Jews especially with the kind of anti-Jewish sentiment that's going on but this um, legislation goes a little too far because what I found out is that if you are you know just someone who um, uh, has was it conspiracy theories theories about Jewish people if you consider the Jews to be in part of the elites that um, conspire against us that's for it that was freedom of speech right um, and although you might not agree with it and you might find these people to be bad for having these views the whole point of being in, in the United States was that speech was supposed to be protected and if anything if, if speech is free you get to find out who the wrong ones are they don't go underground you know that's the thing now all right um, it could be and it's understandable at the moment that uh, a lot of Jewish people in America and of course in London too feel threatened by these um, pro-Palestinian supporters not just of course the uh, you know the the people from the Middle East who were there but the but the woke useful idiots who um, want to go along you know the, the far left sort of like uh, middle class elite university set who um, you know want to uh, want to demonstrate how virtuous they are and all of this right and they are running rampage in the United States at the moment so these are the sort of people who are responsible for bringing in um, draconian legislation like this. Cosplay terrorists is what I kind of think of them as being. Talking about how they're pro Hamas, talking about how they're pro Intifada, using language like that. Well, it's only um, 
it's only natural as a result of that sort of Republican um, people, senators and congressmen are going to get together and decide that they want to do something about it. But just the way things go at the moment, they're all um, jumping on this woke bandwagon. They're all getting infected by it in one way or another, right? And so they want to bring in new laws that, again, are based on your perception, based on, um, you know, an emotion, hate, right? So if you're the sort of person who um, just has conspiracy theories that go off script, that'd be enough to have you banged up probably over there now. Not only that, but the other thing is that you, even Bible quotes according to this new legislation from the New Testament could be considered to be illegal because um, if you were to read out the bits where it said that Jesus um, was handed over to the Jews so the Jews crucified him, well, that's in the Bible. It's not an anti-Semitic trope to say something like that necessarily. Um, it could be if it was used in the wrong context, but of course context don't matter these days, does it? That's the thing, you see. So, you know, the fact is that even quoting from the Bible in certain circumstances could be considered illegal and could be considered as hate speech, which is just absolutely daft. They just don't learn. And, you know, when I, when I found out that um, this legislation, one of the architects of this legislation in the United States actually did look like um, bums are useless is white doppelganger, I thought, well, this is not surprising at all. This is, seems to be what it's like, you know, with politicians now. They, they all look like they've been made in some sort of cloning factory, you know. <laughs> you know, They're just an elite form of NPC at this point. Um, and you can even see the puppet strings on them too. So, of course, this is uh, one of the problems, of course, that we do have um, these days. Is it not? The fact that, um, you know, um, students... And again, what do you do with these students? Most of these students are Ivy League students. But then there's talk of paid protesters um, joining them. Who pays them? Probably um, one of George Soros's um, foundation, was it NGO, non-profit organisation, probably gives them some money so they can do this, uh, so that America can be undermined from within. It seems to be like that. I mean, I don't know um, myself, but... Uh, you know, in the fallout that has happened with COVID and everything else, um, there do seem to be a lot of, um, you know, young people who are a bit mentally ill. And there are a lot of mentally ill young people out there now who missed out on certain, um, missed out on education during COVID when they had to go into lockdown. Um, got a little bit carried away with all the protests that were happening from the Black Lives Matter one back in 2020 to, um, you know, other protests quite similar to that as well. And of course, you know, you notice how they took the knee to the Black Lives Matter one and when all the rainbows came out and all of that, the authorities just paid lip service to them. But every time people tried to do an anti-lockdown protest, that was it. They were far right and they needed a good kick in, right? That's sort of how it is. Well, at the moment, they don't seem to be doing anything about these students um, who are just barricading themselves in, causing vandalism, intimidating everyone and dressing up in cosplay, pretending to be Palestinians and... Uh, acting like as if they're terrorist sympathisers. Nothing's been done about it. They have all the legislation they need to do. All they need to do is just to send in a SWAT team, give them a good kicking and bung them in, you know, bung them in a jailhouse. They could do that quite easily if they wanted to, but they won't, you see. <laughs> they just, it's just an excuse to bring in new draconian legislation because that seems to be something that is happening throughout all the Western world. So you need the people to create a problem in order to get the reaction, in order to bring in a solution. It's the oldest trick in the book. The normies don't seem to question it, so there you go, they still haven't woken up enough, and um, that's uh, kind of how it goes. So the problem is, in this post-COVID era, the post-lockdown era, we really don't know um, the impact or the scale of the devastation that this has had on people and will carry on having on people as we go into the future, because, I mean, you know, suicide rates have gone up, apparently um, the ONS in the UK um, release statistics to say that it was probably the highest um, rate it had been in 25 years. And again, this is not um, spoken so much about, you know, this is the thing, this is probably dismissed or obfuscated in some sort of way or other. As well as that, there's a lot of, um, you know, babies, toddlers during the last few years who as a result of not uh, missing out on certain developmental imprinting stages of their life because of the disruption of not being around adults who, who couldn't see enough moving lips so therefore um, would have affected their cognitive ability to understand lip read, read faces and all of that. Um, so it will have um, effects on them for years to come. In 20 or 30 years we're going to see the results of that most certainly, that's for sure. 
as well as that, um, because of how they've just completely trashed all the economies, there are some very poor and very desperate people. And you know, um, London with the knife crime and all of that. Well, on one hand, people do blame immigrants uh, or they're the, uh, you know, the upsurge of immigration, but it's not just that. It's also the fact that you have mental illness, poverty, desperation, combined with you know, an enormous amount of people from God knows where coming into the country. There's many factors that make it up. And as a result, um, there is definitely a mental health epidemic. So if you're poor and you're struggling, right, that's one thing. But at the same time, you've got all these elite rich kids, the, the Ivy League types, who are completely, utterly out of touch with reality, protesting, you know, doing this kind of uh, telescopic philanthropy. Uh, all they care about is Gaza. I mean, you know, there's enough problems at home yet. All they care about is Gaza because, again, they, they're all born with a silver spoon in their mouth and they haven't really any problems. So they're trying to look virtuous, uh, while at the same time the poor people are going crazy and just killing random people in the streets. And no one's talking about this. And this is the Western world, a dwindling middle class and um, a mentally unhinged elite and a desperate but also mentally unhinged growing underclass and people are not talking enough about all of these things so you know what do we do um, as we go into this future i keep saying you know for anyone who can get out of the west you should i mean this is one of the things that i um find everyone every time i want to look for problems in the world i just go online and i see it in the west i don't really notice anything untoward happening here in the philippines and it didn't seem to be that bad either when I found myself in, um, in Costa Rica, you know. You're around these cultures who are still kind of a little bit more traditionalist, a little bit more conservative, I mean that with a small c, who haven't kind of gone into some crazy abyss of postmodernism um, that the West has gone into, that don't seem to be targeted for that agenda quite in the same way that the West is. And I would, you know, I kind of think to myself that I'm at that point where I say, if you can get out, do get out. I think everyone should try to get out. I know not everyone will be able to. Not everyone's got the means or the will or the ingenuity or whatever. But, um, you know, the more I actually look at the news, it just seems to be one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing. And uh, I can't keep up with the stabbings and the murders and the rapings and the, and the crazy people protesting and all that random shit and the draconian rules that seem to be uh, brought in and all the crazy wokery and all the stupidity. I can't keep up with it. I think, you know, if I, if I was going to do this as a you know, new tu YouTube news channel, trying to keep up with all the crazy stuff, I wouldn't have a life. And seeing as I, you know, mostly come out here, what, once or twice a week to make videos, um, I can only really give you my opinion on a low resolution idea of what I see. But it's, uh, it's fucking crazy now. And, um, you know, all I see now is that, right, back in the 1960s, there was a protest, civil rights movement and all of that. And there's a whole generation of people who missed out on that and wish they could actually, uh, you know, have been part of that. But they can't solve all the problems because all the problems have been solved. So they're just creating new ones now. And um, it's true. Um, so what the fuck is going on? especially like a lot of the youngsters these days who are in at college and university age they especially the ones in the ivy league are the next leaders of the world they're the ones who are going to be working in hr departments they're the ones who are going to end up in government and in politics and they're the most stupid and immature freaks we've had in the world in a very very long time and these are the people who are going to end up running everything unless something radically changes and uh, I dread to think what the um, West will be like in just another 10 years. <laughs> if there even will be a West in another 10 years, because that's the way I'm looking at it, I don't see much hope that there will be. But, in and nevertheless, you know, I, I think this is a great time for satire. I think this is a great time for, uh, you know, seeing the funny side of how crazy the world is right now. What else can you do, you know? What else can you do but laugh? I think at a time like this, that's the one thing we do have to remember, that how it, very, it is very important to laugh. And if we don't laugh, we go crazy. Well, they say laughter is the best medicine and there's comedy to be made out of every scenario. So, you know, that's what I see. Um, nevertheless, 
the world is pretty fucked up and I'm not laughing at the people who are going through an enormous amount of misfortune at the moment, but there are some bloody idiots out there that are really not helping. So, uh, before I go, I've got to show you a second time. Count Dankula being very happy about Bumsa Useless's departure. See it again. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. That's just so silly, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to leave it at that. See you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.